so as you know, I'm a meteorologist. Um, do you guys know what we do? Anybody have an idea? Uh, he's, uh, he tells what the weather is to all people in the world. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's actually a lot of different things that, that weathermen or meteorologists do. You know about the people that are on TV that present the weather, um, give you the forecast with the green screen behind them. Um, there's a lot of different fields that we do, though. Uh, you know, we look at we, we look storm chasing. There's a lot of research that we do as well. But there's a there's a lot of different parts of the job that. Um, basically go into what you see on TV. You know, you have to, if you think about it, um, how do people get those maps on screen? How do people get the, um, the models that you have on screen? There are people that do a lot of work to make sure that those things get off the ground. Um, as far as what I do, I've been working um, in a weather station for quite some time doing radio forecasts. So if you turn on the radio and you hear... Um, somebody give me the forecast. That's pretty much a lot of what I do. Um, but I also look at past weather. Um, let's say that uh, you look at the snowstorm that you guys had in March. I sometimes take a look at that and see exactly what happened with that and tell people what ex exactly what happened so that they could try to forecast for the future as well. So there's a lot of different things that we do. Um, I've been working for five years in my current job. I graduated with um, sciences for the atmosphere and the sky and the ocean. So there's a lot of different things that we do, and it's really, really fun work. Is anybody interested in doing weather as a job or doing something with weather in the future that they're interested with? This one in the back is... Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Um, I actually learned how to do... I, I got into weather in eighth grade. Um, I thought I was going to be doing stuff with space, but um, an earth science class actually got me very interested in doing the weather. So... When you guys are in school, just keep an eye out for any sort of different topics that you like, any, if you like weather, if you like science, if you like history, if you like English, keep an eye out for what you really like. And if you do, just stick with that because that's probably what you're going to be liking for a while. So find what you like and stick with that. I've talked about it about enough about what I do. Um, so you guys are studying the weather, you're monitoring weather changes, um, learning how to make different choices based on what the weather is outside. Like if it's very cold, you know, you dress a little bit heavier. If you find it's going to be more rainy, you put, you bring an umbrella maybe. So there's many different things that have to do with weather. Um, basically I'll show you, I'll show you something of what I do, but first, did any of you guys hear about last night's eclipse and the super moon and the blood moon? Hey, did any of you guys stay up to see it or did you go to bed early? Yes. All right. So I'm going to switch over to my screen now. Um, there's a good picture that I found of the supermoon itself. So let me share the screen here. Okay. So this is a picture from last night's supermoon, actually. So notice here it's very red. Um, that's because of light that actually scatters a bit. Um, and only red gets through, which is why you see the moon looking like red. And then once the sun um, once the Earth passes in between the Earth and the Moon, you start to see less and less and less and less of it. And that's why you see this little shine over here as it starts to get darker and darker. But that was last night. It was very, very cool. You see a lot of pictures on it. Um, what it looked like, though, from, from here is from Paris. You have another one from the uh, United Kingdom. It actually, that looks like the sun. That's actually the Moon. So um, it looks very cool. And that's because they are five hours ahead of us. So even though it was nighttime for us, because of the way that the earth turns around the sun, they were just seeing daylight. So the sun could be somewhere over here, but that is actually the moon. And that's just for how big it was. And so there's a lot of pictures that you can see. Um, but as far as uh, anything else goes, um, I could always send this to your teacher if you want to look as well, but this is what happens during the eclipse. Um, in weather, what I like to do, um, I, when doing my forecasts, I like to look at some weather maps. So you guys have probably seen a weather map that looks like this, right? Of the United States. You see some, uh, this is the radar. So you can see right now, you guys are right over here, right in this little area near Dallas, Texas. So you see some rain over here. What I like to do a lot is set it up so that I could see exactly where everything is moving. So in a little bit, you guys are gonna have some clouds, maybe some showers, and because of this, you could see exactly where everything is. So here's some showers. You guys are right over, right over here. See, right in this area, right over here. So you see these showers. If I press play, you'll see them starting to move towards you. Oh no! 
laughing because I love writing. <laughs> That's right. But what I, what I like to do is look at this. Um, then I also, there is a nice little program where I could see basically into the future, but also see exactly what's happening. So I want you to just keep in mind a couple of things. I'll zoom in here. See these H and see the L? Look out the side. I see your state. You see it? Yeah. It's right over here. <laughs> so you see the L over here? I'll yeah. zoom in right there. That means low pressure. That usually means that you'll see rain, clouds, and low pressure is going to be coming towards you guys, which means it's why you're seeing a little bit of rain. Um, you also see this blue thing over here. A little bit of rain. I wanted a lot of rain. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll do you guys a favor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look up your forecast and tell you exactly what I would do. So does anybody know your zip code? Uh, <laughs> if you don't, I have it. But so you guys are in Richardson. Yes. I'm gonna load this up. I have, I have a normal I have a code. <laughs> I can always look at everything else as well. But you see here for your app for the afternoon. Right now it's 86 degrees outside, and there's a 20% chance of showers. That means that over the day, 20% of it, there's a chance of it passing through. So. What I like to do as well is there's a nice, just to make it simpler, um, I look at a weather graph here, and you can see right here, that's you guys. So you have a chance of just a couple of showers passing through. That's all it is. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but that's, it. that's what I like to do. I just like to look at the weather forecast and try to figure out what's happening with you guys. So um, when I look at the radar, again, this is a little bit here. You guys are over here. And if you press play, you could see the rain moving towards you. So, yeah. Look at the moving forward. It's right here. So you see here? Yes. That, this is the rain. It's moving uh, hold on a second. Why, why is there green? Okay. Oh, yeah. Why is there what? Why is there green? I will get into that in just a second. There's a lot of different things to talk about. Um, but the rain is going to be moving here to here. See? So by the time that you get out of class, it should still be dry. But by the time you get home, you might see a little bit of rain. Um, so I'll get into why it rains in just a second. Um, so, but before we talk about rain, um, you guys have been looking at temperature a lot, right? Yes. So, watch the news every day. We have a chart. Exactly, yeah. So, can anybody tell me how you measure temperature? What do you use to measure temperature? It's, um, that thing, like, um, what, <laughs> what when the, um, wind blows, um, it, Oh, well, this, yes. Uh, how do you measure temperature, though? Here. It's oh, this. Can we do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A thermometer. A thermometer. thermometer. That's right. So you. Very hot. Yeah. It's, yeah. This this one is very hot. So this isn't you guys right now. So don't worry. It's not that hot. But do you know why the thermometer works? Um, here is it's a liquid called mercury. When it gets warmer, the merc the mercury gets larger and larger, and it goes higher and higher, telling you that it's getting warmer and warmer. So when it gets cold, the liquid goes down because it's getting colder, and it shrinks. So that's how it tells temperature. Um, you might also have, if you went to the doctor at all, or if you ever take a temperature, you put one of these in your mouth, right? It, you put it under your tongue, and it beeps, and it tells you your temperature. That does it uh, with with electric uh, with electricity. So it basically tells you it just digitally, and it's very cool. It uses um, this really cool technology, um, but that's measuring temperature. Um, just shout it out. What what else do you what, what else can you measure? Oh yeah, just, just shout it out. Just shout it out. Um, hey, if you know uh, what the mean. heat. The heat, yeah. Oh. Yep. Yep. And what else? Yeah, yeah. Did, it's get colder and colder and colder. Right, right. So there's also. There's also wind that you can measure, right? You can measure wind. You can measure what the pressure is outside. You can measure how humid it is outside. For you guys, usually when it gets warmer, it also feels a lot more wet outside. You sweat a little bit more. Um, this is what you use to measure wind. So you see here these little cups? When the wind blows, this goes around. The faster it goes around, the higher the wind, right? 
Yep. Um, this is what you could build if you want as well. All you have to do is take straws, a pencil, some tape, and some winds. And all you have to do is hold it outside, and when the wind blows, it'll blow around. Um, you measure that for one minute. So you take a stopwatch and measure for one minute. Every time you see one of them blow around, let's say that it moves around 10 times in one minute, that's 10 miles per hour. So that's a good way to measure that one as well. Um, and I could always send, I could send this as well to you to, um, to make this at home. It's a very cool experiment. And yeah, it's a, just for measuring the wind. So that's another thing. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about rain, but first I want to show you something. You guys know about the rain cycle? Yes. Okay, so what I'm wearing right now, I'm wearing a shirt. Oh, you know what? That's great because we study that next week, so this is perfect. Whoa. Okay, so I'm wearing a shirt right now that is the rain cycle. You can see here all the rain on the ground. Here, let me um, make it a little bit larger here. Oh. Okay, you see it now? Okay, so you can see here, let me stand back a little bit. You can see here, this is the water on the ground. It's like the ocean. You see here the Ferris wheel? People are getting up on the Ferris wheel and it's going into the clouds. You know what that's called? Uh, no. Evaporation, evaporation. So the water will go up into the clouds. It's there. And then once the water is in the clouds, you see here, it starts to rain down and goes back into the ground. And the cycle goes right over again. So once it's in the ground, it goes back up, evaporates into the clouds, goes into the clouds, and then falls down again. So that, that is the, um, that's the rain cycle. And I'll show you it a little bit better here. So again, water's on the ground. It's either in the oceans, it's in puddles, it's, in, um, it's on your kitchen counter, it's in the, uh, riverbeds, it's in ponds, lakes, it's in everything. When it gets hot enough, it goes up into the sky and evaporates. And when that happens, it gets a little bit colder and a little bit colder. And when that happens, it starts to reform as little ice crystals, which are clouds. So you see here, the clouds are here. And once it starts to get enough of it, they get heavy and fall down. Oh yeah, you guys have some questions? Me? Yeah, uh, go right ahead. Um, when you were little, did you watch um, the Weather Magic School Bus show? I did with Miss Frizzle. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I, I lived on that show for a long time. So, yeah, I, I, I've loved that show for quite some time, and that helped me learn about a lot of things. Um, one of my favorite episodes, actually, is when they shrunk down the Magic School Bus, and they went into the human body up the, up the bloodstream and went to the heart and everything else in the body. Ralphie. Yeah, exactly. So, no, that, that was one of my favorite shows growing up. Um, do you guys know Bill Nye, the science guy? Yeah. What? What is he? Uh, Bill Nye, the science guy. Yeah. That was also one of my favorite shows growing up. I actually still watch that time to time. So that, those shows, even though they're for kids, I still watch them as an adult because they're very, very, very cool. Um, and, it, you know, it, does, it never gets old. Um, but, okay, so the, I'm just showing you again. This, this is the rain cycle. You'll learn about this next week. Um, here's another image of it. You see here the water. So the water goes here and it goes upwards into the sky and when there's enough water in a cloud it drops down oh did you guys have more questions i think i saw you on tv this morning oh i'm not i'm i'm on the radio so you might have heard me on the radio but i'm not on tv yet but um yeah if, if you turn on some radio stations once in a while you'll hear me speaking um but yeah that that's part of what i do actually um i look up weather and i read it it's gonna be cold when we get home. So here, let me let me load up the uh, your forecast again, and I'll show you. Come on, load up. Okay. So when you get home, here, uh, let's say you get home at four o'clock. It's going to be, and I could load up here. You can see exactly what your temperature is. It's going to be 86, 87, 88. It's going to be pretty constant at that temperature. It's going to stay the same. So by the time that it even gets to nightfall, it'll be around 82. <laughs> 82 yes wow. then, that's really cold yeah tonight when it gets when tonight when it gets very dark out it gets even colder so it's going to be 71 by the time that it's very dark out i didn't tell my mom that <laughs> oh, it's going to rain <laughs> yes okay so um next up you guys wanted to talk about um how water becomes ice how ice turns into back into water um so 
this is a cool little diagram. Um, it shows you what happens. So what, when, you, when you see ice melting, if you take it out of the fridge, it starts to melt into water, right? If you put it back into the freezer, it freezes into ice. Liquid? Yeah, so, so liquid water. Let's say that you have the, the water in this glass right now. If I put it into the freezer, the water will turn into ice, right? And if I take it out of the freezer and put it on my table, it's warm enough so that it turns back into liquid. And if it's hot enough, the water will turn into a gas and evaporate into the sky, forming clouds if there's a lot of it. And again, once the clouds start to rain, that clouds turn back into water, which means that it's condensation. Um, if you see a lot of fog outside and it goes onto your window and all of a sudden you see water on your window, it's condensation onto your window. So this is a very nice little diagram showing you the difference between ice, water, and any, any vapor in the sky like clouds. Um, so I want to show you now why it rains. That's the next thing that you want to talk about. Um, these are, you know about clouds in the sky. These are some really cool looking ones. See these, that's not, it looks like a wave of water, right? It looks like waves coming into the ocean, onto the beach. These are actually clouds. And then this one, it looks like a UFO, right? This is another type of really cool cloud. Exactly. Now this, yeah, this is a, this is called a fire rainbow cloud. What you're seeing here, these rainbows are on top of a cloud that looks like basically a little wisp. Um, but yeah, this is an actual cloud um, and it looks really, really cool. I've seen them once, but hopefully if you're lucky, you could see them as well. Also, this is a thunderstorm cloud. See how gigantic it is? It looks like an, it looks like an anvil. It looks, so dark. it looks like a UFO. It looks like a UFO. <laughs> now, I heard somebody say it looks really dark. That's because this is so large, it blocks a lot of the sunlight. It so, was like a UFO. so when you see rain or thunderstorms coming, you notice how it gets dark in the sky? That's because the cloud is blocking the light. Um, and here, let me show you. This is This is a little bit of rain and cold weather as well so you know about rain it's you see here it's very cold up in the sky and then it hits us when it's warmer um i just want you to think about it you know how if you're on the ground it's very warm right what and you see a picture of a mountain there's usually snow up there that's because when you go higher and higher into the air it gets colder and colder and colder so all the way up where there's clouds it's very cold that's because those clouds are little ice. When they fall down, they hit us, it gets warmer, and it becomes rain again. So that's why you're seeing rain. If I go back to that radar, let me show you that radar once again. If I go back to that radar, come on, load up. So that rain that I was showing you before, right over here, this rain, when it's in the sky, it's actually cold. And when it falls down, it becomes warm again. Cool. So, let me go back here. So, rain is what falls down when it's warm out. If it's a little bit colder, like if, if it's under, uh, do you know? Do you know what temperature water freezes? Anybody? Just shout it out. Ooh, I don't know. Really, 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 really? Saying that? Really? <laughs> no, no. <What's> <laughs> really, 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 really high. <laughs> oh, thirty-two. Ice, yes. Ice, I, I, ice, ice. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> So when the temperature is 32 degrees out or lower, you see snow, right? So yeah. that's, that's this one right over here. This, this is snow right here. That's yeah. because temperature is always below freezing. So all these ice crystals and all the snowflakes never melt and it becomes just snow on the ground. Thank now, you. yeah, right here, yeah. So sleet means that it goes through a little bit of warm air and then refreezes. That's what sleet is. Freezing rain, that usually causes ice on the ground, and that's because it goes through a lot of warm air, goes back into rain, and then freezes on the ground. So that's that. Um, and actually, snow um, is a lot of different types of things. So you usually see snow that looks like this, right? Normal snowflakes look like this one that you see here, right? So this this is a normal snowflake, right here. 
pretty. Yeah, and as you get colder, though, sometimes a snowflake looked like columns, little little needles, little oh. columns. Um, that usually happens when it's very cold out. Oh, so, this one. We, oh, yeah. I see the one that like that. Yeah. The plates. Huh? Yeah, the plates. Yeah, th those are really cool looking. That's what happens when it's 10 degrees outside or close to zero outside. So snowflakes look a lot different when it's cold out. And you can see here, what does anybody know what this is? Yes. I've seen that picture. It's a um, hail. Yeah, hail. I, I, Ice balls. Yeah, these, these are hailstones. Yeah. That, now that is what happens when rain when there's a lot of upwards wind. So all that rain goes right back up higher, and since it is colder up in the air, it refreezes, and it becomes more ice and more ice, and then more collects onto that, becoming bigger and bigger and bigger, until it's so heavy, it falls back to the ground as hail. Um, so next up I want to talk about, you guys know what hurricanes are, right? Yes, I love hurricanes. So this, yeah. <laughs> So this is a hurricane. This is actually um, <laughs> yeah. So th this is a big hurricane. Um, this is a very strong one, actually. You can see here. There's a lot of clouds. If this is called an eye wall, right here, that's usually where the center of the hurricane is and where the strongest winds are. Um, now, are these a wall? I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It 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 usually that's usually what it is. The 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 closer you get to the hurricane center, the stronger the winds there are, um, and that's because um, there is low pressure in the center. Uh, think about when you're going up on an airplane. You, anybody go on an airplane and it gets higher and higher, and your and your ears start to pop, and it feels like your and it feels like your head's pushed in a little bit. That's because the pressure is getting lower and lower and lower. So because of that, here, I'll show you a nice little picture. Um, this is a water bottle on the ground. Then the person went up a mountain, and it got squished a little bit more and a little bit more. And as they went to the top of the mountain, the bottle became really, really squished. It's because the pressure gets lower and lower and lower. There's a lot less air. So in a hurricane, there, this pressure is very, very low. Looks like Earth a little bit. Yeah, it does. Um, that's because the everything is spinning around. Um, I'll I'll mention that in just a second. But everything is spinning around, and everything's always moving, which is why you see a lot of these happen like that. Um, now, do you guys know why hurricanes happen in the summer instead of the winter? No. The water is warmer. So you can see here. See where it's very very dark. Huh? That's very, very warm water. If you go down, though, this is very, very cold water. So um, hurricanes, when they form, and actually, let me, let me type in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. You guys have had a lot of hurricanes come by you. So if I type in this right here, that's where you guys are. And if I search by the amount here. That's a lot of states. They have lots. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like a under there. Uh, this is okay. So if you see here, these are all the hurricanes that actually passed by you guys in the past, I think, uh, 50 years or so. So you can see, you see here, there's quite a lot of hurricanes that go through you. Um, now, as far as a hurricane is how it's made, there's a couple of different things that go into making a hurricane. So you can see here, the water has to be warm. Like I said, it has to be very warm. And because it's warm, you have a lot of evaporation going up into the air. When the winds go into the air, they start rotating around a little bit. If you have some, some winds, it starts making go into a circle. And eventually, you'll get the hurricane start to form because there's enough water enough winds, enough rotation, it goes around in a circle, to create that, that storm. Uh, why water can go up? Uh, this is, uh, water evaporates. So the water, it gets hot enough that it turns into, uh, it turns into water vapor, which is a gas. And if you think about it, what we're breathing right now is air. It's a gas. It has some oxygen in it. Um, that's all air. It's all gas. So it's warm enough that it becomes into it goes right into the air because it's uh, it's warm enough that it rises into the into the sky. Tell you something. Sure. 
where you live. I live in New York. So if you look on a map. What? Shh, listen. How you? Yeah. I got a live thing from New York. He's going to show you where he lives. So I live right here. This is New York. So you see all, all this? This is where I live. If I zoom out, you guys are right here on the very bottom left. Why we are so far. Yeah, and actually, I can measure the distance. So I'll click you guys here, and I'll click me. We are... Wow. We're, we're almost 1,400 miles away, 1,400 miles away. So we're very far away. <laughs> Yeah. Two days? So you would have to take an airplane to go there? Exactly, yes. So let me show you guys. Um, you guys know about hurricanes. Do you know how many categories a hurricane has? Yes. How many days? How many? Just shout it out. Zero. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> it goes from category one to a category. Zero. Three. Three. Zero. Uh, a little bit higher. A little bit higher. Three hundred. Five. Five. Yep. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys this. This is a little image of hurricanes. So as it gets stronger and stronger, you'll see here, right now the winds are blowing, the house is blowing a little bit. It's not too bad, but as it gets, as it gets higher and higher, notice the, the trees are starting to really bend. This is a category three hurricane. So it's very, very strong. And you see here, the, the roof of the, uh, the house is actually starting to blow off. If I press play again, now it's turning into a category four hurricane. See here, the house is actually starting to blow away. And category five, which is the next one up right here, everything's pretty much, it's so strong that everything blows away. So the higher the category, the more, the more it actually starts to really cause a lot of damage. Now, this is a weather map that you guys have seen. Um, high, 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 low. Yep, exactly. So this isn't this is not what's happening right now. But if you see here, high pressure, there's no rain anywhere, right? When it's high pressure, that basically says clouds go away. That's about it. But you see here, the L is for low pressure. There's a lot of rain. There's a lot of snow. And you see here as well, this this uh, blue right here. Yes. That is a We're cold. Going to us. Yeah, exactly. That's a cold front. And then red is a warm front. That means that there's cold air pushing on the warm air for cold front. And for the red, that means there's warm air pushing on the cold air. Um, now, you guys are familiar with tornadoes, right? Yeah. 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 Tornado. The yep. blow away. Yeah. So here, let me show you something. Um, I showed you that already. Tornado. Now, somebody, I, I, somebody mentioned that um, the Earth looks like it's going around in a circle, right? So this is our sun. This is the planet Mercury. What's the second planet? Mars. Mars. Venus. Venus. The third planet is. Earth. <laughs> Earth. And then the fourth one, that is Mars. So you see how this goes around the sun in a circle? That's Where is the moon? Where is the moon? Oh, the moon? Um, the moon is somewhere over here. It's actually just out of the shot. But there, there's, the Earth has one moon that goes around it. Uh, Mar uh, Mars actually has two moons that goes around it. But they're not seen here.